If you've been playing actively in the digital marketing or startup space, you must, you must have been hearing a lot about growth. Good marketing, good hacking, good mindset. What is this? What does it actually mean? In this video, I won't talk about good hacking, but precisely how you can develop a good mindset um, as a digital marketer. Now, marketing has evolved to just, you know, advertising and spend and acquisition channels to thinking about speed over perfection, progress over perfection, optimization over just how much money we have to spend. These are things that make up the good mindset. If you want to um, do a lot better for the companies that you work for, if you want to um, have more results, more um, ROI on your marketing effort, uh, especially when you're working with startups or small businesses, then you need to start developing the good mindset as a digital marketer, as against just knowing the different PPC channels and you know what CPC and the rest of these things mean. So stay with me in this video as I talk about the different elements or characteristics of a good mindset as a digital marketer. <laughs> to watch this video my name is PC Timmy my life's mission is to grow people and grow businesses and that's what I do on this channel on this channel I create videos on marketing branding business customer service and on life if this is your first time please make sure that you click on the button below to subscribe also click on the bell notification button so you're notified every single time I release a video which is at least once every single week and if this is not your first time Thanks for being here again. Make sure you comment and share after it. Let's get right into it. Good mindset as a marketer. Okay, now I'm experienced. Um, there are five key things that make up a good mindset in marketing. Experimentation, data, support, content and communication, content and comms, and then very importantly, optimization. I'll talk about them, you know, individually one by one. First of all, experimentation. A key aspect of growth marketing is learning how to test different things. It's understanding the value of experiment, of iterations, not say, trying to you know, have just one idea and then you know, going for that idea until maybe it crashes or it doesn't, but being very fast in coming up with new ideas and trying these new ideas at a very fast pace. Like I said in the introduction, it's progress and speed or progression and speed over perfection. So you're not trying to find the perfect idea. You're trying to come up with as many ideas as possible within the shortest or fastest time frame and experimenting, trying each and every one of them over and over again, trying multiple variations of the same idea over and over again until you find your winning combination. So as a good marketer or as a marketer that has the good mindset, a key thing that you want to start learning how to do is experimentation, coming up with experiments and tests that can actually give you eventually the perfect or the right combination. The second thing is data paying attention to data, paying attention to metrics and measurement. Now, it's not just about experimenting or coming up with ideas, but it's making sure that every experiment is first of all backed by data, and then your result, you're collecting the right set of data and inferring the right insights from those data so you can then you know, decide that this is actually the winning combination. I'll say that again, when it comes to data is one, making sure that the experiments you come up with are one, backed by data. Why am I trying to test this feature? Have I checked different things to say, okay, you know what, I'm doing this because I've seen one, two, three, four things. There has to be data to back up the experiment. It's not just, oh, you know what, this thing could be fancy or it sounds good or people are doing it already. Two, when I then run my experiment, what am I looking for? I'm also looking for data. I'm looking for insight. I'm checking and measuring every single aspect of it so I can actually make very, very insightful and data-driven decisions for my brand and the business. Another thing you want to pay attention to is support. Now, when it comes to growth, growth is very user-centric. Growth is not just about, you know, um, the product or, you know, the 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 service that we're offering, it's really about the people, how we can acquire customers for the lowest spend or no spend at all, and make sure that these customers that we're current are people who we stay all through our business or product life cycle. So a key thing that actually helps with this, getting con um, customers at the lowest or no cost, 
and making sure that there are people who will stay all through your um, customer life cycle, so that their um, lifetime value is very high, is support. Support is everything from user activation, user onboarding, anything that makes it very easy for your customers to, one, understand your product, two, adopt your product, and three, to actually use it for a long period of time. So you're always there to answer their inquiries. You are there to give them information even before they start asking those questions. You're there to make sure that the UI, the UX, every single thing that has to do with your product, from even the development, down to the design, down to your comps, your mark, whatever, everything you need is very seamless. So these people come and they find it very easy to use your product. They understand it, it's easy for them to start using, it's easy for them to continuous, continuously actually use. So support is a very key part of growth marketing. And that's why that you see that a lot of growth hackers or growth marketers are people who sort of have a little bit of knowledge or experience working across different departments. So it's like a very, it's a cross-functional um, role because you're going to work with product people, you're going to work with your customer success people, you're going to work with the marketing team itself, those who are just, you know, doing adverts. You're going to work with, even sometimes, even the tech people itself. So it's very cross-functional because you need to make sure that every single customer touch point, you are there to support this, your users. And then we have content and communication, which is very similar to support, but why support is there to uh, make sure that you're answering their questions or even providing answers before they need it consistently. Content is making sure that you're actually giving these people um, content that is very valuable and they are keeping in touch regularly with your users. It's not enough to get your users the first time. When you get them and they become um, your users or they start using your product or your service, what happens after them? How do you keep in touch with them? What content are you creating that would continuously be providing value to these people so that you're always top of mind and you're always there to engage with them and also to drive talkability for your brand and your product. So you always need to be creating a lot of content, search content, video content, anything that adds value to your target audience, anything that informs them on how to better use your product, anything that also helps them to keep you at the top of their mind and to further drive engagement and talkability for your product or your brand. Again, content marketing doesn't need a lot of spend and that's why it's super important when it comes to growth. And then the last thing on the growth mindset is optimization. Now, when I'm doing my experiments, the key thing I'm looking for is a winning combination, right? I'm looking for the, the particular idea or the particular test I would run that would more or less hack my goods and get me from like 0.0 to 0.100. Now, the key thing to achieve that is continuously optimizing. So I'm not just running a random set of experiments every day or every week. I'm running my experiments, getting data, and using that data to always optimize each element in my experiment, right? So you're continuously thinking of optimization, optimization. Again, optimization is how do I get better results so that and spend less? How do I get better results and spend less? How do I get better results for lesser effort? How do I get better results for lesser effort? And to do that, you have to keep checking different elements in your content. You have to keep checking different elements in your customer support or customer success. You have to keep using data to ideate your experiment and to um, get the result from your experiment. You have to keep optimizing every single element. So optimization kind of cuts across everything. I'm optimizing every element in my experiment as I'm running them. I'm using data to optimize because I'm not just optimizing for my head, right? I'm tracking, I'm measuring, and that's what I'm using. I'm checking what's happening with our support. What's our user activation like? What's our stickiness like? What's our um, adoption rate? What's our um, customer relationship um, response time like? I'm checking at every point in time to make sure that everything that has to do with user onboarding, user support is consistently up to par and in content, I'm creating more content, but not just creating content as well, quality. I'm continuously creating quality content that can engage my audience, that can give them more information, that can keep me on top of mind, and also that can drive talkability for my brand and product. Because at the end of the day, it's the engagement and talkability you get for your content marketing that will help you to get users at a little or no cost. So that's it, guys. You want to do marketing, you, but you want to do marketing this year on a different level. You want to do it better. You want to grow, actively grow your businesses. And growth is not just I'm getting users, right? It's not just I'm getting customers. It's not just that I'm everywhere and we're advertising everywhere. It's that we're spending less, but we're getting very quality users who can end up becoming brand advocates for us consistently. And to do that, 
you need to run experiments. You need to be data-driven. You need to give support. You need to create content consistently and communicate with your customers. And you need to always think about optimization more for less, more for less, over and over and over and over again. I know that this video is very beneficial. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. But thank you for watching to the end. Make sure that you comment. Make sure that you share. Most importantly, do not leave this channel without subscribing. Click below.